Hi everybody, welcome to story time. Glad you're here and make sure to come back or stay tuned till the very last book because we're going to make a lot of noise on that one and that'll be fun. We're outside again at Miss Joy's house. The first book is in honor of Poetry Month. April is Poetry Month and we only have a few days left for April so we better do poems. This one says Little Poems for Tiny Ears and the poems are by Lynn Oliver, illustrated by Tommy DePaula, and we've got permission to read this book from Penguin Random House. It's a Nancy Paulson book. So we're only going to do a couple poems from here. And the first one is, I see a baby. I see a baby in the mirror. Lean in closer, see her clearer. If I laugh or if I coo or blow spit bubbles, she does too. She is such a copycat and looks like me. Imagine that. And one more poem from here. There's so many good ones. Peekaboo. Maybe you've played that with your moms or dads or grandmas or grandpas. Peekaboo, I see you. That's what the grown ups say. To my surprise, they hide their eyes. Then poof, they go away. I do not know just where they go. Their faces disappear. Then in a while, with great big smiles, they're back and say, I'm here. Maybe you've played peekaboo with your little brother or sister. It's so fun. So there's a lot of great other poems in there. So someday, come to the library and check this book out. And you can read all of the poems. Next, we're going to read Duncan, the Story Dragon. This is one of my favorite books. It's by Amanda Driscoll. I hope it's one of your favorites too. And it's published by Scholastic, so we have permission to read this book. Duncan the Dragon loved to read. I hope you love to read too. I know I do. When Duncan read a book, the story came to life. Wow, look, he's, it's in his imagination. And his imagination caught fire. Unfortunately, so did his book. Oh my goodness. I just want to finish a book, said Duncan. I need to know what happens. Do the pirates find treasure? Does the captain save the ship? Do aliens conquer the earth? And I want to read those two wonderful words, like the last sip of a chocolate milkshake, the end. He ne look, he was sad. He never got to read to the end because he gets so excited that he'd burn up the book. Duncan tried everything to keep his cool. Really? What's he doing there? He's in the refrigerator, right? Truly, he had fans going. Oh no, and he still set the book on fire. Everything, now he's in the bathtub trying to stay nice and cool. I have an idea, said Duncan. I will find a friend to read to me. So Duncan searched a nearby neighborhood. Hello, friend, he said to the raccoon. Will you please read me this book? Duncan explored and ev oh, uh-oh, look what happened. The raccoon, he took off. Duncan explored an evergreen forest. Hello, friend, he said to a possum. Could you please read me this book? Uh-oh, what happened to the possum? Ah! <gasps> Plonk, possum played dead, right? Sometimes that happens with possums. Duncan traveled to a faraway farm. Hello, friend. He said to the bull, will you please read me this book? Oh, that does not look like a very friendly bull. I don't know what's going to happen. <gasps> Yow! The bull charged at him, and he had to climb up a tree to get away with his book. After searching the entire countryside, Duncan trudged back to his cottage his cottage. That's a really cute cottage. As he hugged his book, a fat tear trickled down Duncan's cheek. It landed with a plop. 
dribbled, drabbled across the floor, then ran lick, lickety split, split splat into a mouse. I don't know if you can see this. The mouse is reading a book also, and the book is called The Friendly Dragon. Sad ending? Asked the mouse. I'll never know, said Duncan. As Duncan explained his problem, he noticed a twinkle in the mouse's eye. Do you like books? Duncan asked. I love books, said the mouse. Would you, could you, will you please read me this book? Certainly, said the mouse. So the mouse read to Duncan. Together they battled sea monsters. Whoa! Dodged icebergs. And discovered new lands. They took breaks for roasted hot dogs and toasted marshmallows. And I hope some popcorn. That's Miss Joy's favorite snack. <laughs> Finally, the friends sailed home. Then the mouse read those two wonderful words like the last sip of a chocolate milkshake. The end. There's the puffins waving goodbye. But actually, it was only the beginning. It's the beginning, right? Because they're going to read a lot more stories now that they're friends because they both love to read. Okay, that's book number two. We've got a whole bunch of other books. Let's do a song next, but I need your help. I really need your help on this one. It's called Cat Goes Fiddly Feet. Now, it looks like just a regular book, right? But it's actually a song. I'm gonna sing some of the verses, and then you can join in on sort of the chorus. The chorus goes, Cat Goes Fiddly Feet. So whenever I get to the part that says, cat goes fiddly fee, I need you to sing that part, okay? That'll really help me out. This is by Paul Galdon. And it's actually a classic folk tale or a folk story, but he illustrated the pictures, he drew the pictures, and he adapted the story. It's read with permission by Houghton Mifflin Company. I had a cat and the cat pleased me. I fed my cat by yonder tree. Ready for this? Cat goes fiddly fee. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time because I didn't hear everybody singing. So can you sing? I need your help on it. I had a cat and the cat pleased me. I fed my cat by yonder tree. Ready, this is where you come in. Right, cat goes fiddly fee. Good job! So that's gonna happen on every couple pages. I had a hen and the hen pleased me. I fed my hen by yonder tree. Hen goes jimmy chirp, jimmy chirp. Cat goes fiddly fee. Right, good job. This actually looks like my cat. My cat's black and white. I had a duck and the duck pleased me. I fed my duck by yonder tree. What sound does the duck make? You can join in on that part too if you want. Duck goes quack, quack. Hen goes jimmy chip, jimmy chip. Cat goes fiddly fee. Good job. This is fun. Oh, there's the cat way up in the tree. I had a goose and the goose pleased me. I fed my goose by yonder tree. Goose goes swishy swashy. Duck goes quack quack. Hen goes jimmy chop jimmy chop. Cat goes fiddly fee. Good job. I had a sheep and a sheep pleased me. I know you know what the sheep sounds like. I fed my sheep by yonder tree. Sheep goes ba. Ah. Goose goes 
Switchy swatchy. Dog goes quack, quack. Hen goes chimmy chop, chimmy chop. Cat goes fiddly fee. I had a pig and the pig pleased me. I fed my pig by yonder tree. Pig goes, now I know you're gonna say oink oink, but in this book, the pig goes griffy gruffy. Griffy gruffy, kinda does sound like a pig sound, right? Like oink oink, but, or snort snort. Pig goes griffy gruffy. Sheep goes ba ba. Goose goes swishy swashy. Duck goes quack quack. Hen goes chippy chop, chippy chop. Cat goes fiddly fee. You know this animal. I had a cow and the cow pleased me. I fed my cow by yonder tree. Cow goes. Oh, I knew you knew this one. Moo, moo. Pig goes griffy gruffy. Sheep goes ba ba. Goose goes swishy swashy. Duck goes quack quack. Hen goes chimmy chop, chimmy chop. Cat goes fiddly fee. He's still up in that tree, watching all the animals. I had a horse and the horse pleased me. I fed my horse by yonder tree. Horse goes, nay, nay, right? Cow goes, moo, moo. Pig goes, gruffy, gruffy. Sheep goes, ba, ba. Goose goes swishy swashy. Duck goes quack quack. Hen goes chimmy chuck, chimmy chuck. Cat goes fiddly fee. I had a dog and the dog pleased me. I fed my dog by yonder tree. Dog goes, oh, there goes the cat. Dog goes bow wow. Horse goes nee nee. Cow goes moo moo. Pig goes griffy gruffy. Sheep goes ba. Ba, goose goes swishy swatchy. Duck goes quack quack. Hen goes chimmy chuck, chimmy chuck. Cat goes fiddly fee. Then grandma came and she fed me while the others dozed in yonder tree. Bye, bye yonder tree. And the cat went, good job, fiddly fee. Yay, that was fun. A music book. We have two more. Oh, I hope we have time. I better start reading quicker. This one is called A Second is a Hiccup. If you're at home and you probably feel like you've been at home for a really long time, well, this is a book about time and how time goes by. It's by Hazel Hutchins. And I really like the pictures in this book. The pictures are drawn by Katie McDonald Denton. The book is published by Scholastic. They've given permission for this Arthur Levine books. And it's called A Second is a Hiccup. How long is a second? A second is a hiccup. The time it takes to kiss your mom or jump a rope, or turn around. How long is a minute? Six, how long is a minute? 60 seconds to a minute, 60 hiccups, 60 hops. Or if you sing just one small song, chorus, verses, not too long. That's just enough to fill a minute. How long is an hour? 60 minutes singing by. If you build a sandy tower, run right through a sprinkly shower, climb a tree and smell a flower, pretend you have a secret power, that should nicely fill an hour. How long is a day? 24 hours by the clock, starting when the sun comes up a day needs filling like a cup. Hiccups, kisses, 
songs and showers, lots of trees and lots of flowers. Breakfast, lunch, and snack and dinner. Play some games and cheer the winner. Draw a picture, read a book. Tell a joke and learn to cook. Watch the sunshine fade away. Fall asleep and that's a day. How long is a week? Seven days all in a line. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the end day, Saturday. A favorite one. Some are quiet, some are fun. Work days, home days, play days, school days, seven wake-ups, seven sleeps. Close your eyes and do not peek, but you'd never, ever, ever stay asleep for one whole week. Oh, they're in a tent and they're having fun with a book, yay, and popcorn. How long is a month? Four weeks add up to form a month. Lots of time for things to change. Seasons often rearrange. Winters melt and warm to springs. Caterpillars find their wings. And if you fall and scrape a shin in a month, there's brand new skin. Learn to tie your laces tight. Learn to float relaxed and light. Learn to count clean up to 10. Learn to count back down again. Watch the moon grow round and fat, then thin again. Imagine that and all of it in one month flat. How long is a year? 12 months together make a year, a great big circle spinning round. Climb aboard, you're one year bound. You'll grow right out of your old shoes and taller too, now that's good news. Sunshine, snow, and rain and squall Winter, spring, summer, fall. There's things to love about every season, right? Snow angels watering the garden right now in the spring, licking an ice cream cone at the beach, and blustery, windy days when the leaves all flutter around. Twigs on trees grow leaves and peaches. We have a peach tree in our backyard here. See how far a whole year reaches. Tiny babies learn to walk. Maybe your little brothers and sisters. Bigger babies learn to talk. Holidays of every kind link together in a line. When your birthday's almost here, you are older by a year. Oh, there they're having a birthday party. Changes come and changes go round and round the years you'll grow till you're bigger, till you're bolder, till you're ever so much older. And through all the hours and days as time unfolds in all its ways, you will be loved as surely as a second is a hiccup. The end. Isn't that sweet? Oh, and you know, there's something called a dedication at the end. And that's usually the author saying why they wrote the book or if they wrote it for somebody. And this says it's for the great grandchildren of Peggy and Bill Sadler, a delightful ever growing circle. How about that? Not just grandchildren, but great grandchildren. So that's really neat. A second is a hiccup. Yay, we have one more book. Are you ready to make some noise? I sure hope so. We we sang the music book, the, the book with music. So we did make noise, but there's cars going past and they're so noisy that we've got to do a noisy car break.
book. Let's do it. Since we're outside and there's cars, now he came by right at the right time. This is called Cars Go. There goes a truck by Steve Light, and it is published by Chronicle Books. They've given permission to read this book. So can you make some noise with me? Great. Cars Go by Steve Light. The police car goes wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. Can you do that? I hope you're doing that with me. So I'm not the only one making that noise. <laughs> wee -oo, wee -oo. Police car. The old jalopy goes chitty chitty. Chitty chitty Those are a lot of sounds. Oh, there goes Griffin next door. Woo, woo, woo. But it's not the pet. It, we're not doing dog stories today, Griffin. That's Mrs. Kaleidas' dog right next door. The old jalopy. Next one is the hot rod. That's like a race car. What sound does the hot rod make? How about this one? Brum. I think there's some of those going past today, past our house. Brum. Brum. Can you make that sound? It's like a b, and then a r, and you end with a m. Brum. Race car, hot rod. The pickup truck. We've had a few of those go past. They can go... Brip it, brippity, clank, clank, brump, brip, brump. They make a lot of noise, like kind of bouncing noises. Brippity, brippity, brip, brip, clank, clank, clickity. The monster truck. Woo! We haven't any, had any of those go past, but they have giant wheels. And they go crrr, crrr, crunch, crunch. Because they're crunching over the dirt rocks. Yeah, they're like an off-road vehicle, right? They go all over the place. A monster truck. The sports car goes vree, vrum, 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 vree, like a v, v, like violet, a v sound, and then re. Vree. Can you make that sound like the sports car? The taxi! Oh, here goes a motorcycle. Ooh, I wonder if there's... Oh, no, this is just about cars. But the taxi goes squeak, honk, 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 honk. I've been down in New York City, not recently, but sometimes, and you hear a lot of these. As soon as the light goes green on a traffic light you'll hear honk 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 everybody's in a big hurry all the time Ooh, yeah the last one the car of the future the car of the future goes where would you like to go today that'll be fun right where would you like to go today and then it just whisks you off and takes you there car of the future. Maybe you are going to grow up and make this car in the future. Wouldn't that be cool? And it's like a voice car that we just tell it where to go and then it goes. We can already look up on our phone's directions, so that's kind of neat. So that is the last book. And guess what it says on the back? That's fun. Some like Just like there's end paper, sometimes there's fun things on the back of books. Start your engines, rev up your reading with eight noisy cars as they honk, clank, vroom, and zoom their way through the lively book. This lively book. And there goes another truck. So thank you for coming today, boys and girls, and I will see you at the next story time. Bye!